Dear Rail Lovers, welcome to Railways Explained. As we mentioned in previous videos, today we are going to talk about one, we are free to say, mega railway project currently undertaken by the UK government, better known as High Speed 2. Having in mind this project is already well known to all railway folks, we don't think there is a need for further introduction. So let's jump straight into the video. The West Coast Main Line is one of the most important railway corridors in the United Kingdom. It connects the major cities of London and Glasgow with branches to Birmingham, Liverpool, Manchester and Edinburgh. The core route of the WCML goes from London to Glasgow in the length of 642 kilometers. It was built in stages from 1837 to 1869 and it underwent two eras of modernization. By the British Rail in 1955 and the Network Rail in 1990. During these periods, most of the line was upgraded to a maximum speed of 201 km per hour. The WCML is also one of the busiest mixed traffic railway routes in Europe. It is characterized by a mixture of intercity, regional, commuter, and freight traffic, and at this point, it is operated at its full capacity. In that sense, it was recently concluded by the UK's Department for Transport that it is impossible to satisfy the existing demand by further improvements on the existing infrastructure and that it is necessary to build a new and separate passenger-dedicated railway line along its route. This would then result in additional opportunities for increasing freight and commuter traffic on WCML, but also the other existing routes such as the West Midland and the East Coast mainlines. In addition, Network Rail's study on new lines from 2009 identified the key routes on the British Rail Network on which the increased capacity is needed to cope with forecasted levels of demand. This study also concluded that by the end of the next decade in the context of the high peak hour, the route that will become full first is the corridor to Birmingham and the Northwest, with no spare capacity for more trains or passengers. Finally, it proposed construction of a new high-speed rail line that should serve WCML destinations. The additional incentive for this idea was the ambition to reduce demand for domestic aviation whose capacity already became scarce. Thus, the High Speed 2 project, or shortly HS2, was born, and its life cycle is the main topic of this video. By the way, if you like our content, want to support our work and at the same time get some special opportunities in return, check out our Patreon page. The link will be in the description. Now, back to work. A key feature of all HS2 proposals was the idea that the new double-track high-speed line should be interoperable with the existing conventional network. That's the idea of purpose-built conventional trains capable of operating on the new tracks at full speeds, but also capable to seamlessly run onto conventional tracks at speeds up to 200 km per hour. This will enable trains to reach destinations served by slower tracks such as Liverpool, Glasgow, Edinburgh and Newcastle. The realization of the HS2 is planned in two phases. Phase 1 should result in a new high-speed line between London and Birmingham and phase 2 in two branches north of Birmingham towards Manchester and Leeds, thus creating a specific Y network. The Y network is planned as double track with design speeds of 400 km per hour. It will be compliant with all European Union technical standards of interoperability, including the signaling which will be based on the European Rail Traffic Management System. When it comes to regular operation, the trains are planned to operate at the speeds up to 360 km per hour. Phase 1 is about 225 km long and the long route it envisages four stations, London Euston and Birmingham Curtin Street, with interchanges at Old Oak Common and Birmingham Interchange. This route is very complex in terms of the construction process, bearing in mind it includes several complex structures. For example, it will have 51 km of tunnels, out of which the longest is the Chilterns Tunnel, with a length of 16 km and 90 m of depth. On the territory of London there will be several tunnels with a total length of 21 km and a maximum depth of 50 m. It is estimated that in total 130 million tons of earth will be excavated, enough to fill 15 Wembley stadiums. 
In addition, over 500 bridging structures will be constructed under and over the route. Within these 500, there are over 50 viaducts in the length of about 15 kilometers. Within HS2, UK's longest viaduct will be constructed, crossing the Colne Valley long over 2 miles. Also, as part of Phase 1, a delta junction outside of Birmingham will be built. This junction is 9.5 km long and consists of 7 bridges and viaducts spanning over 3 rail lines, 8 roads and 5 rivers and canals. Now, one curiosity. The DFT initially outlined plans to build a 2 km link between HS2 and the existing HS1 that connects London with the Channel Tunnel. The vision was of course the creation of an integrated high-speed network across the UK. However, to our regret, this idea was abandoned to save budget resources of £700 million. In any case, as HS1 and HS2 will not be integrated, HS2 Limited proposed to enhance links between HS1's terminus at St Pancras and HS2's terminus at Euston, which are separated at their closest points not more than 640 meters. HS2's proposals include improvements to pedestrian links between the two stations and the construction of an automated people mover. The two terminals will also be served by the same station, Euston St Pancras on Crossrail 2, which could in fact provide a covered connection. The Phase 2A segment in the length of 58 km will run from the northern end of Phase 1 at Radley in the West Midlands to Crewe in Cheshire. There, services will join the existing rail network to enable direct services to places including Liverpool, Preston, Carlisle and Glasgow. The Phase 2A route is dominantly rural, passing through farmland, but also includes residential areas and towns. Along route, there is around 2.5 km of board tunnels and 7 km of viaducts. In addition to this phase, Crew Hub is also planned. The Crew Hub is an important part of the HS2 network, giving additional connectivity to existing lines radiating from the Crew Junction. It includes a tunnel under the Crew Station, allowing the HS2 trains to bypass the station while remaining on high-speed tracks. Also, it includes new branches of the WCML to the south and north to allow HS2 trains to enter the station. The Phase 2B segment forms a Y shape, split into an eastern and western leg. This phase is currently designed at 85 km for the western leg from Crewe into Manchester and to the WCML south of Vigan, and 198 km for the eastern leg from Phase 1 into Leeds and connections to the Midland Main Line south of Chesterfield and East Coast Main Line south of York. To give you a sense of the significance of this project, let us mention this. By completing the full Y network, HS2 will directly connect 8 out of 10 largest cities in the UK. Lessons from previous mega-projects in the UK suggested that establishing a company wholly independent from the government was essential to speed the things up. Thus, in January 2009, the government created High Speed 2 Limited to deliver the program and to maintain and manage the infrastructure once it opens. At the same time, DOT is still responsible for funding and sponsoring the program and it is ultimately accountable for successful delivery. Now, one may be a bit boring part, but still very important segment of every mega project, bureaucracy and administration. Let's try to be as concise as possible. In December 2009, High Speed 2 Limited produced its initial report for the government called High Speed Rail London to the West Midlands and beyond. In March 2010, the government presented its response to Parliament in command paper called High Speed Rail by which the government supported preferred route. Between February and July 2011, the government undertook a nationwide public consultation on its proposed strategy to bring this project. In January 2012, in response to public consultation, the government published the command paper Investing in Britain's Future, Decisions and Next Steps. In this document, the government has decided that it should obtain development consent for Phase 1 of HS2 by primary legislation, an Act of Parliament. This was the same approach as for both the Channel Tunnel Rail Link and Cross Rail. 
Then, in November 2013, HS2 Limited deposited a hybrid bill to the parliament with aim to seek powers for the construction and operation of phase 1 of HS2. And finally, after eight years of bureaucracy, discussions and procedures set third reading in the House of Lords on 31st January 2017, the hybrid bill for phase 1 was strongly supported with 385 votes in favour and only 25 against. Following the remaining stages of the parliamentary process, the high-speed rail London West Midlands Act was given royal assent on 23rd February 2017. But even this was not enough to start full-scale works on this project. Regarding Phase 2A, on 17 July 2017, the government introduced the high-speed rail West Midlands to crew bill into Parliament. Again, after two years of bureaucracy on 15 July 2019, the bill received its third reading in the House of Commons, with 263 votes in favour and 17 votes against. And the bill was gained royal assent on 11 February 2021. It's not a justification, but it's good to know that this piece of legislation and its accompanied 140 documents had in total over 12,000 pages. The HS2 program has been subject to both support and opposition as almost every other mega project in the world. Supporters claimed that HS2 will provide increased capacity and reliability enough to combat rising passenger numbers while driving further model shift and helping the fight with climate change. On the other hand, opponents of the project claim that HS2 is neither environmentally nor financially sustainable. In response to criticism, in August 2019, the government and Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced an independent review of HS2 known as the Okervy Review. It was headed by Douglas Okervy, who was, by the way, the project's former chairman. The review had the aim to gather and test all the existing facts and to allow the government to make proper decisions. The Okervy Review concluded that HS2 should proceed but with several recommendations which need further attention. These recommendations are related to cost estimates, procurement and contracting strategy, reducing the speed of trains and their frequency, construction of Phase 2A in parallel with Phase 1, and few others. We need to mention that this review did not start from a blank sheet of paper, because a lot of similar work has already been done before. One of the main conclusions from the report was the fact that the impact of cancelling of HS2 would be quite significant. Costs already incurred up to that moment were approximately £9 billion, though some of these may be recovered. That was around £2 to £3 billion associated with land and property development, while additional direct costs of cancelling the project were estimated at around £2.5 to £3.6 billion. There would also be significant detrimental consequences for the supply chain and fragile UK construction industry. Regarding the overall costs of the project in 2010, they were estimated at between 30.9 and 36 billion pounds. In 2015, this estimate was revised with the costs of rolling stock and adjusted for inflation, which gave a 56.6 billion pounds. Okervy's review then in 2019 estimated that the project would in fact cost between 80.6 and 88.7 billion pounds. These cost increases have led to certain reductions and optimizations, such as abandonment of the idea of a link between HS1 and HS2. As per latest information from 2020, the budget envelope set out by DFT is now astonishing 98 billion pounds. The reasons for these cost excesses can be found in fluctuations of the costs of land, and designed route that goes directly into city centers, which requires construction of a large number of tunnels and other major structures, which could only be avoided if the route joined the existing network on the outskirts. In October 2018, demolition began on the former carriage sheds at Houston Station. This marked the start of preparatory works, which were supposed to allow the start of construction at the throat of the station at Mornington Street Bridge, and twin bore tunnels in the length of 13 kilometers. However, the main stages of construction of Phase 1 officially began only in 2020, after the government gave formal approval in April that year. 
At the largest Chiltern's tunnel, the first of ten enormous tunnel boring machines named Florence began excavating Earth in May 2021. In June, HS2 launched a second TBM named Cecilia. It is expected that these works will take around three and a half years. These TBMs are designed and manufactured specifically for this project. They are 170 meters long, which covers the length of 15 London buses, and have a mass of more than 2,000 tons. Also, HS2 Limited and its environmental contractors have designed tailored ecology plants that provide habitats for local wildlife and protected species. As part of its extensive environmental program, HS2 has announced that its contractors have until now planted 700,000 trees and created over 100 wildlife sites along the route between the West Midlands and London. Alongside this route, up to 7 million trees will eventually be planted. HS2 Limited is currently replanning its schedule for Phase 1. The schedule pressures related to the issues with completing utilities diversions, postponed land acquisition, COVID-19 lockdowns, and slower-than-planned development of detailed designs by the main work contractors will not impact the projected deadline for completion of all works. The target date for completion is planned within the range from 2029 to 2033. As we stated, the bill for Phase 2A was gained a royal assent on 11 February 2021. This was a major milestone for the program, after which the HS2 Limited was able to access and acquire the land necessary for the construction works, as well as to start early environmental actions. For this phase, HS2 Limited determined a construction start date as of spring 2024, and completion of all works same as for phase 1, somewhere between 2029 and 2033. Regarding Phase 2b, the Okri Review concluded that Phase 2b needs to be considered a part of an integrated rail plan for the North and the Midlands, which includes Northern Powerhouse Rail and the Midlands Rail Hub. The UK government now plans to present an integrated rail plan, which will look at how to deliver Phase 2b better and more effectively. According to information from HS2 Limited's official website, the UK government has asked HS2 Limited to proceed with the development of the western leg of Phase 2B and to pause works on the eastern leg. In that regard, HS2 Limited intends to submit a hybrid bill for the western leg in early 2022, or even sooner if possible. As we stated, by completing the full Y network, HS2 will directly connect 8 out of 10 largest UK cities and cut journey times almost in half, as you can see on the screen. Although HS2 planned to provide a service of 18 trains an hour by 2033 to and from London, the Okerby Review stated that this is a higher frequency than currently delivered on high-speed lines anywhere else in the world. The report concluded that the specification for HS2 is ambitious compared to the current international experience and that a more viable assumption of 14 trains an hour should be used as a central planning assumption. HS2 is forecasted to carry over 300,000 people a day and with trains fast enough, there will be extra capacity for more trains on the existing rail network. This extra capacity, as we mentioned, will improve the reliability of the network and provide the rail companies with an excellent opportunity to increase and improve services on these corridors and other locations not directly served by HS2. Regarding the rolling stock, bidding for the estimated £2.75 billion contract to design, build and maintain the trains started in 2017, and it is expected to be awarded during 2021. The first batch includes at least 54 train sets with a maximum speed of at least 360 km per hour, and the capability to operate on both HS2 and the existing infrastructure. Alstom, CAF, Siemens, Talgo and a joint venture of Bombardier and Hitachi were all shortlisted for the contract. No official decision has been made on the state of the Alstom and joint venture bids following the Alstom's acquisition of Bombardier earlier this year. In June this year, Siemens has launched a legal battle against HS2, filling a procurement claim. Siemens is therefore the second of the five bidders to launch a legal claim against HS2 Limited, following the Spanish manufacturer Talgo. What could we say as the conclusion after all that was said in this video? Maybe only to give you a promise that we will closely monitor the implementation of this project in the years to come. 
As real lovers, we wish all the luck that this Y network is completed within planned deadlines. But our experience taught us that this most certainly will not be the case. After all, you had the opportunity to see all those mega projects that we have covered on our channel. Certainly, the Revelis Explain team will be there for you to inform you about this and other interesting projects, especially on our Patreon page, where we will strive to make a comprehensive post whenever something important happens. So consider to support our work by becoming our patron. This was a story about High Speed 2 on Railways Explained. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your rail-loving friends and of course subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, goodbye.